who was your favorite team in the city of Atlanta? Probably can't say, but I'm going to put you in an awkward <laughs> position right now. So growing up, I used to watch Atlanta Braves baseball, Atlanta Falcons football, yes, sir. and then Atlanta Hawks. I would, man, I wanted to be Dominique Wilkins. <laughs> I still love Dominique Wilkins, man. Who that doesn't? Dude, that dude, the human highlight, yeah. you know, that's him. The human highlight film, he was dunking on everybody's head. And I know everybody thought Michael Jordan, you know, Michael Jordan won the 88 dunk contest by man. one point over <laughs> Dominique. Man, you know, when I mean, you talking about, like, I was 14. I was, man, I was fighting the TV, man. <laughs> Behind the mask. What's happening, bro? What's good, family? Another day in paradise. You know what it is. You best believe it. It ain't too many times that we get the level or the type of guests that we have today that's going to bless us with all of their intelligence and their ambition. Facts. So shall I proceed? Let's go. Listen, man. I want to bring inside of the BTM Lounge the pride and joy of Benjamin E. Mays High School. <laughs> Shout out to Mayor Andre Dickens. Hey. <laughs> what's good, what's good? Hey, what's going on, gentlemen? Good man? to see y'all, man. All right, good deal, good man. Good deal. You, man. Thank you for having me on, man. This is cool. Absolutely. Oh, Glad God. to have you in the lounge. There's not so many times that, you know, we don't have uh, athletes in the lounge, but we, we have a lot of people that go around the city and say, yeah, I'm the mayor of this, mayor of that. We got the real man. We got the real man. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, man. And I used to be an athlete. Mm -hmm. Not no more, though. <laughs> no, nah, don't, don't let don't let them convince you. Once an athlete, always, always an, athlete. an athlete. There it is. I'm an athlete. There it is. Right. There it is. But prior to your election, you served eight years at large city council member, entrepreneur for over a decade in both the private and non private sector. And a big time leader in Atlanta's tech sector. Like we really blowing up here. Atlanta's mm -hmm. really been known as the tech sector of the South. But I just want to ask you, what led you to being such a public servant for the community at such a young age and coming all the way up until now? Yeah, I just love the community. I'm born and raised here in Atlanta, as you know. You said it. I went to Mays High School, Atlanta Public Schools right here. My my mother, my sister, my grandparents all went through Atlanta public schools and in this area. So I love this city, it's in my bones, it's in my blood. And so I wanted to serve it uh, since I was 16 years old. When I was 16 years old at Mays High School, I said, I wanna be mayor of Atlanta. I met Andrew Young and I saw what he was doing for the city of Atlanta, what he was doing for the country. And I said, I wanna be mayor, I wanna serve people. I thought Atlanta was the best city in the whole United States and I had never been to another city. I was just watching like Miami Vice, I was like, eh. You know, <laughs> Hill Street Blues or Chicago this or that, you know, L.A., you know, the colors and gangs and stuff. I was like, hey, man, Atlanta, 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 you know. And so, you know, I went on to college. I did engineering because I was really good at math and science. But I went on and I served when I was at Georgia Tech. I served as like student government, uh, uh, you know, representative. I was the black student union president, president of my fraternity. So I learned how, of Kappa Alpha Psi, I learned how to really nurture people and raise them up and give them voice and to speak truth to power, you know, talk to the administration. And I learned to do that at a young age. And then I, said, hey, I did neighborhood association. Then I ran for city council and I won. And then I ran for mayor and I won. So I'm here and I'm glad I'm here. We got a winner in this Listen, seat over here. <laughs> and I can appreciate that at 16 years old saying, I want to do something and seeing it through. Obviously we share similar thoughts at a young age for, um, playing ball, you know what I'm saying? We always say, yo, I want to be a, a football player, professional athlete, what have you, yeah. and, it, uh, and it worked out. So you always wanted to be mayor. That was your goal. Yeah, I always wanted to be mayor. I mean, but, but the only thing that I knew before that was I wanted to be a baseball player. Mm. That was it. I played baseball uh, from the time I was six years old all the way to 17. And so I knew I wanted to play baseball, but I also knew I wanted to be mayor of Atlanta. So that was uh, my dream, and I and I... I hit my dream in 2021 when I ran and won. So, uh, you know, all your listeners, all your friends, everybody should know, just like y'all's dream came true, mine came true, and we want everybody's dream to come true. No doubt. And I think a big step to that, or a big part of it, is having great leadership in the city council area. And when you have representatives who you know who represent the body of the people, uh, change 
essentially it comes. Uh, now that your departure has put you in a higher seat, what are some of the hopes and things that you hope to see city council continue to do or even look forward to them, to them doing? Yeah, so together, the mayor and the city council, we run the city, and I was city council at large, so citywide for eight years, running the, the, the city of Atlanta. I was with Keisha, I was with Kasim, and now it's me. It's my time to run the city and try to make sure that uh, we continue this this great growth that we're on. I mean, Atlanta's thriving. Everybody's mm -hmm. moving here. It's booming. New companies are popping up. Old companies are growing. Folks are choosing Atlanta. Everybody that graduates from Morehouse, Spelman, Clark, and you know Morris Brown and and Georgia Tech, Georgia State, and all these schools, they stay. And so we just keep growing, and we get new conventions and all the sports and all this stuff. And so for me, I want us to keep that growth going, but I also want it to be balanced growth that people on the south side, people that are, are from families that don't have, you know, college degrees in their past or they don't have much money in their past. So it's now my job to balance that growth, to provide equity and opportunity for everybody. So I want to look up one day and Atlanta is thriving and that this city is the best place in the United States to raise a child. Once we get to the place where everybody wants to raise their child here, we know that the entire village is strong. But if we just only have certain people doing well, then we haven't done our job enough and we're going to have other problems down the line. And you, you just spoke about several of the schools uh, here in Georgia, in Atlanta. Um, graduate of Mays High School, you hold a bachelor's degree in chemical engineering from Georgia Tech, uh, master of public administration from Georgia State University, and you just had your first mayor's ball in December which benefits HBCUs. So talk about uh, Atlanta's school system, the university, and how we can continue to support the HBCUs here. Yeah, I mean, you know, I know people go all over the world to get education, but if you are here in Atlanta and, you're, and you wanna get a great education, get it right in this city with the HBCUs that we have, Georgia Tech, Georgia State, Emory, SCAD. We are the center of diverse intelligentsia. Right? So if you are black, you're white, you're Hispanic. Yeah, yeah, yeah. intelligentsia. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, man. You put E on the end of anything. It's going to be five, man. Podcast this year. Yeah. <laughs> exactly. Like yeah, man. Like but it's the intelligentsia, man. All the things that we do here in Atlanta, these folks are smart. You know, uh, Morehouse had Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. and what he did for the whole world. Mm -hmm. You have, you know, Maynard Jackson was the first black mayor. Uh, of a southern major city. And so you think about the talent, the mentality that these folks had coming out of Morehouse or coming out of Spelman or coming out of Georgia Tech. We, we train well here. And because the city is open to people having um, various different, you know, backgrounds, come here. You know, uh, Georgia State has a, you know, it's the largest school. It's the, it, it graduates more black people than any other HBCU. And it's a state school. Mm -hmm. It's just so large and so many minorities go there. So... The education that you get in Atlanta makes you, you know, makes this city smarter, makes us more, um, more uh, connected, and then I'm hoping that it makes us, you know, more able to uh, diversify and be equitable in our growth. That's one thing I can say because uh, I've been living in, I've been living in Atlanta since '97, '98, and had the opportunity to play in different cities, and you know, you you meet leadership. And you see everybody has a different agenda, depending on what the need is for the city. But the one thing I do want to uh, commend you on is just moving Atlanta forward. And you're starting the initiative Year of the Youth. And uh, I, I want you to ex ex expound on that a little bit because I think it's pretty cool to put an emphasis on the youth and what you want to see out of it. But it's your idea, your concept. I'm going to let you go ahead and take the mic and spit on it. <laughs> yeah, man. I mean, I love the youth of Atlanta and anywhere. I believe when you make a, a city great, it has to include how the young people can thrive and how they can be great. So I was sharing with this uh, young lady uh, about my idea of the year of the youth and that 2023 in Atlanta is the year of the youth. She's from Kenya. And she says, well, you know what? Because she heard what I was talking about. I want to make Atlanta the best place in the country to raise a child. And I was saying, we're doing this with nonprofits. We're doing this with Parks and Rec. I got midnight basketball. We got summer employment. We're doing all these things to keep youth busy and activated and culturally aware. And she was like, uh, she said, in Kenya, we have this phrase called Kasirian Inangra. 
And it says, how are the children? Mm. That's how they greet each other. You know how we would say, hey, man, how you doing? And you say, I'm fine. They say, how are the children? And the response is, all the children are well. And that's the, the warrior people in Kenya. And they, 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 they were, you know, strong. And they were warriors. But at the same time, they were very well aware that if the children weren't doing well, if all the children weren't doing well, they were weak as a society. And so... The question, like when we say, hey, how you doing? You say, I'm fine. They're basically saying, how, you know, how are the children? And the response is, all the children are well. That's where our strengths are. And so that's why I'm really kicking in on this year to you, making sure these kids are educated, making sure they're empowered, that they can learn and do things, engaged, where they have mentors. Uh, it's so important right now to mentor people because they're learning stuff from all over the place. They're getting like, a, you know, they're getting a buffet of information on TikTok, YouTube. Yeah, so some of it's good for you, some of it's not good for you. But mentors, women, men, and good, strong people that's, you know, teaching them and empowering them and educating them and employing them as an intern, it's going to really make that difference where you're going to see these youth are thriving in Atlanta. And they're doing such a, you guys are doing such a great job as well because, uh, as Takeo said, the tech hub of the South now, uh, arts and entertainment, STEM, the youth has so much that is accessible to them now. So how did you really spearhead that movement to have so much available for the youth? Yeah, I mean, it's really, it takes intentionality. You have to go out there and tell everybody, the, the government, yes, the school system, yes, but also the business community and the nonprofits and the churches. Everybody has to chip in on this group project. Atlanta is a group project. It's not just going to come from one person. All of us got to put in on that group project. So when I went to the business community and said, we're going to hire 3,000 youth this summer, you know, because these kids need things to do, I'm not, I don't have 3,000 positions in the city of Atlanta. We got about 1,000 that we ended up hiring them at the airport and the law department and Parks and Rec. The other 2,000, they came from Coca-Cola. They came from Ikea. They came from Accenture and, and Delta and this company and this nonprofit and this um, law firm and this, you know, all the, you know, small and medium and large businesses, including churches. Hey, how are you? Keep them out of trouble. And uh, nonprofits, you know, these folks like like the, the aquarium. Imagine being a youth and feeding the fish in the aquarium. You got to weigh the fish. You got to weigh the food. You know, and that's your job each day. And you get to swim with the, the dolphins or what have you. That was a job. And we made sure that youth were involved in it. So all the technology companies, MailChimp and Microsoft and, 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 and Facebook and Google that are here, they all chipped in. Airbnb and uh, Amazon, they all chipped in. So that's how we get this done. It's the group project mentality. It's just like you fellas. When you played, man, everything isn't just on you. It's on your yeah. team. And so that's right. how you win successfully. Yeah, and I, I do consider football the greatest team sport of all time. Um, but I want to ask you, who is your favorite team in the city of Atlanta? You probably can't say, but I'm going to put you in an <laughs> awkward position right now. So growing up, I used to watch Atlanta Braves baseball, Atlanta Falcons football, yes, sir. and then Atlanta Hawks. I would, man, I wanted to be Dominique Wilkins. I still love Dominique Wilkins, man. Who that doesn't? Dude, that dude, the human highlight, yeah. you know, that's him. The human highlight film, he was dunking on everybody's head. And I know everybody thought Michael Jordan, you know, Michael Jordan won the 88 dunk contest by man. one point over Dominique. <laughs> man, you know, when you're talking about, like, I was 14. I was, man, I was fighting the TV, man. <laughs> man, you know? I, I was, it was, a, listen, we had Dominique sitting in the same seat. And I told him, I said, look, Nick, I know I, you got hosed in 88. He got hosed, man. Hose. It was in Chicago. Yeah. It, the, the, the dunk contest was in <laughs> Chicago, and it was Michael Jordan versus Dominique. Dominique was dunking on their head. Michael Jordan did the same dunk twice. twice. They gave him 50s back to back. I'm an old man. I remember this. I'm mad right now, man. Let's change the subject. I Let's know Let's change the subject, man. I'm saying every time, every time this conversation comes up, somebody from Atlanta goes off, man. Man, we were kids. Real, like, man. man. Like, 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 why are we going back to school this week, man? We need a, we need like a moment of silence. Like, this was sad. But no, nah, man, I love every Atlanta sports team. I mean, I, I go to Atlanta United games, and we won championships. Went to Atlanta Braves, uh, you know, games, and we won the national championship just a couple of years ago. You know, go to the Falcons. I was, I was unfortunately at the, you know, the, the uh, Texas Stadium when we lost against the Patriots. I was there. Uh, now, nah, hold up, that brings <laughs> me to this. You just, Super Bowl. So, <laughs> we have great teams in Atlanta, mm -hmm. but we get a lot of flack for. 
you know, they say the Atlanta natives be bailing on the teams because we be so hard due mm-hmm. to the fact that the Atlanta Falcons lost to the Patriots yeah. the way that they lost. <laughs> yeah. And then so people say, oh, y'all got fair weather fans, i.e. New Yorkers over there. You yeah, know what I'm relax, saying? You got to relax. So, like, <laughs> I think about it. Some of the teams, like, we've had some champions come through here. Yeah. Atlanta United. Right. Well, in the second year of existence. In the second year of existence, mm-hmm. they won the whole thing. Then we also had uh um, the Braves won twice Braves in ninety five and in twenty one. Twenty one. Yep. And now you got UGA. You got UGA. Oh, whoa, 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 whoa. Y'all can't claim <laughs> UGA. UGA is in Athens, it's not in Atlanta. You gotta go to Georgia Tech. You gotta go to Georgia State. <laughs> oh man. Kennesaw State. Man, like now, hold when up. I, I broadcasted for Kennesaw State for a few years. I ain't see all the love when they won the Big South Championship. Now, nah, because when did they win the Big South Championship? I want to say in 2015 and 2016, bro. I heard nothing about And you was doing it. the broadcast. And Kennesaw is closer than Athens. Well, that's the problem. <laughs> you didn't speak loud enough if you were doing the broadcasting. <laughs> Nobody <laughs> knew. <laughs> and I ain't pulling for Georgia. I'm an Auburn guy. Right. But you know, I wear thing, Georgia though, colors. Like, New York actually does not have a football stadium. In New York. They don't. It's in Jersey, right? Hold on, man. Mr. Mayor. That's, Did, you know, what you, aren't you talking about? He's telling the truth. Y- y'all, New, the New, York Nets, uh, New York Jets and the New York Giants play in the same stadium, but it's in New Jersey. That's like Athens to us. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> I'm wrong, man. Exactly. I can't even say that. I can't even say that. You know I, I'll take that. I'll take I, I really don't have a comeback. <laughs> That's all right, man. I'm still a giant fan through and through. We know That's that, right. man. But, you know, shout out to you. Yeah, listen, I can appreciate, one thing I can appreciate, when the city of Atlanta sports do well, the city is galvanized. You can really feel the energy. So I, I do salute you guys for that. Yeah. And, I, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm a Georgia native. I can't, you know, I can't yeah. knock it now. I've... I've a, a transplant, as you say. This, this the same. This New Yorker right here <laughs> went and bought a grill, like one of the ceramic grills. I'm not calling out the name because they need to pay us for that. <laughs> but he's committed to the process of like the tailgating. He mm. he be smoking wings and everything. Oh, so good. I got an old school. He's officially a good. Georgia native. Yeah, man. yeah. I That's broke him up. in, Mayor. Good. I Thank have. you, man. I, Thank you. I saw Outcast video back in the days, and I saw the. The Cadillac, so I got me a 70 Cadillac DeVille. Woo! Yeah, so you know, DeVille, I'm all that's in. that long. Yeah, that long drink. Yeah. I'm all in, man. <laughs> so, like, if you, speaking of sports, if we had the next big team uh, to win, who do you think it would be? Do you think the Falcons actually have a chance to, to win in the future or maybe um, the Braves again? Or the Hawks, I should say. Yeah, football is hard. I mean, y'all played a hard sport. It, to, to, to endure for you know 17 games now, then go through the playoffs, it's tough. The Falcons have not. I mean, I love them. I watch the game every year, every every day. They haven't built a resilient team. They haven't built one that can last the whole season, and and, and then that just toughness, that mentality. You got to have a dog out there. Yeah. You got you got to be a dog now to win. And so they they just don't build that kind of way. Arthur Blank, I love him. He he hasn't described the team in that dogish way. And I want, I mean, I like nice guys too. We just ain't necessarily demonstrated that's going to win you a championship. So I'm looking at the Hawks as, you know, you can, two players can take over a whole basketball league, right? Nice, if you, nice. if we get the right combo, you know, we got, we got, we got like, you know, two out of five guys that, you know, if you match them up right, we might get there. The, the environment at the games, at the Hawks game, oh, yeah. electric. You know, I mean, I haven't been to any other basketball game that's as good as ours in the nation. And so, got the right setup, yep. got the right, you know, uh, energy. Now yeah. we just got to, you know, these guys are right now playing 50-50 ball. Yeah. And they're beating great teams and losing to, you know, teams that they should win to. They just got to figure that out. And I'm liking Brother Murray, young cat. He got that swag to oh, yeah. him. Yeah, yeah. Sean, he got swag. Sean, he got swag. Man, he come out the there. The Jante. Yeah, the Jante, he come out there with that swag. We need you on the BTM podcast, partner. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah, good one, man. I mean, you know, Ice Trey ain't no slouch, man. Yeah, I mean, Trey you know, Trey Young true. still shooting the ball from the freaking scores table. Like, got just walk in. when he walk just, in the building. He just walk in the building and shoot the ball, and everybody's like, it's, it's going to go in. That's Trey. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, I, I like our team. I, I like tell you chance. what, this is the – you are right. Your assessment is right. When you look at Arthur Blank and the, the uh, Atlanta Falcons, rebuilding stage, I think they're a little bit beyond that now, above that, need a quarterback. 
finally the the main guy who's mm-hmm. going to be the consistent, you know, pull the trigger. Now, basketball. I, I, I have a hard time now because you gave us this great interview. You talked about all of the things that come inside of the city that we all love. Yeah. HBCUs, you got Google, all of the corporations are moving here. Entertainment. 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 Huge. Why can't we, rep, this is going towards the Atlanta Hawks, why can't we get the big time free agents? Like they want to go everywhere else. Right. We got everything. Beautiful black people, beautiful white people. And it's entertaining. Yeah. And the entertainment gets behind the sports. Mm-hmm. So if this is an opportunity for you to make a pitch in free agency for the Atlanta Hawks, what would you tell the guys who are looking for teams and why should they consider Atlanta? Well, fellas, you hang out here every day anyway. <laughs> <laughs> You're here all the time. You got your cars are here. You're just hanging out, partying. You come to our restaurant. You go to our bars. You go to our lounges. You got family members here. You might as well play for the team of the ATL, man. Let's make it official. Come on, fellas. What are you waiting on? I want a, <laughs> I want a roster full of dogs, man. Guys that just go out there and win games. And then you're in a city where at the end of the night, you, know, you just have fun, right? Yeah. Yeah. Not too much fun, though, because... You know, mayor got to make sure you everybody go to bed <laughs> at night and wake up the next day. But fun, no doubt. Yeah, enjoy the fruits <laughs> of your labor, guys. What are right. we talking about? Right, you're here go. anyway. You're here in Atlanta and anyway. And ladies, too. Shout out to the Atlanta Dream. Oh, I love right, Dream. Right. I love the Dream games. And, and uh, you know, this is what it's all about. The whole network of, of, of high school, college, and professional sports that are here is great. We just need a few marquee players for that, for that championship that we're trying to get. And I, hey, guys, holler at us. Hey, Mayor, we appreciate your time. I know you got to go. I see your assistant over there putting the heat lamps on us right now. (laughs) Director of press. Yeah. But uh, we appreciate the time, man. Thank you very much. And if there's anything that we can do for you in the city to be able to help you with the initiatives, if it comes to uh, the kids, uh, the corporations, you know, we businessmen too over yeah, here. Yeah. We got our MBAs. I like it, man. Yeah. Oh, I know. Y'all, y'all, listen, y'all are already doing it. One, y'all got a business in this city. So y'all got a business in the city of Atlanta. I'm thankful for that. Y'all live in the city of Atlanta. And so I'm glad that y'all are here. And so, yeah, I'm going to make sure that these youth listen to your podcast and, and know how, because they like to start podcasts too. Absolutely. They all got stuff, uh, you know, they want to talk about their things. Some of them want to be, you know, professional athletes like you guys. So I'll keep that in mind and make sure we get you connected. Absolutely. Thanks, man. Good deal. Appreciate it. All right, brother. All right, man. Take care, man. Behind the mask.